Welcome, welcome. Hello, I am not your curator to curator for tonight. I am Trey Balchowski and I'm one of the co-founders of Odd Salon and I am here to welcome you and introduce our curator for this evening, Lilia. Lilia, as most stories in San Francisco start, this one time at Burning Man, uh, I met Lilia in a detective agency. An amazing noir detective agency. And they solved so many mysteries and plied us with so many cocktails. It was amazing. And as most people do, or not, I followed up with her on Facebook and was like, you are awesome, I want. <laughs> Be my friend, please. And I chased her up to Seattle and became her friend up there. And then uh, I'm gonna say that I convinced her to move to San Francisco. I did not, she came to here all on her own. Uh, and I was like, you have to come out to this thing that I do. It's called Odson, and she did. And it changed her life. <laughs> so, I introduce to you Lilia. Thank you so much. Before we do the thing, I love you too, Amy. <laughs> Try it, I recognize all of your voices. Just kidding. Um, I'd like to thank the artists upstairs uh, who provided such beautiful art upstairs. Eden Gallanter, Beth Abdallah, Stephen Tan, Seth Rosenblatt, Stella Brown, and Megan Dahl. Thank you very much. I'd also like to thank Ivan and Alexander. Ivan for the membership cards and Alexander for this sweet lectern. I'm done with that piece of paper. I am so happy to see you all. Um, how many people are here for their first time? Everyone. So my first time here, uh, it did change my life, but you'll hear why. It was at Oddman's 2014, their end of the year show. It was a Tuesday night, a dark room a stage, a microphone, a cocktail glass. You know, the calling cards of Odd Salon. Odd Salon, Ocelot. This community of participatory storytellers and history nerds where experts and amateurs come together to explore the odd stories found in history, science, art, and adventure. <laughs> Serious stories and sometimes silly slides. I remember watching a back channel of oh-so-clever commentary in real time on Twitter, following the Odd Salon handle. You should do that. I encourage you to follow Odd Salon tonight and, and really get into it, because if you take a picture of a slide you love and you tell us why you love it and you make what should have been the better joke, I'll call you out after intermission, okay? So let's just see if you can be funnier than the speakers up here. Okay, sorry, so there I am, first night, here I am. Uh, I was like uh, you in the cheap seats. So there were all these people interrupting and they were shouting at weird times in the middle of the story. What, what I interpreted <laughs> as words of encouragement, but they were actually more like captions. For example, <laughs> were I to casually refer to these as boats, you'd graciously remind me Do you, I'm gonna um, intro it so you guys, wait. <laughs> or, wait, <laughs> if I went on a long illuminating rant about nucleic acid structures, you'd cheerfully add as epilogue. Science! You get it? Like, I'm gonna, the word will be there. Okay. But I'm hoping that someday we'll add more callbacks, like dragons, yeah! and the metric system. <laughs> Yeah, here's hoping. Okay, so, so back to that night, back to that night. <laughs> Besides these callbacks, people were also just bursting into applause for black and white portraits of people I didn't honestly recognize, people like this guy. Okay, you've gotta feel pretty good about yourself if a crowd of people just literally burst into cheers for Charles Darwin. <laughs> if there's anyone here on a date or a first date, um, you look super cool. You are crushing it. You're gonna look even more attractive when you casually member when you casually mention that you're a member of this incredible organization. 
What? Go on, I will. Oxlon recently launched a membership program, and you can be a part of it. We are on our fifth year of producing salons. And if we rely on volunteers and the support of attractive, charismatic, generous people like you. People like you who want to keep the independent art and community and weird of San Francisco alive. You can also join in on some of the fun for free on Facebook in the group called Something Weird. You'll see pictures and anecdotes from tonight's speakers found in their research and they had to just edit it out for time. You'll also see other oddities discovered by this passionate group of nerds. Okay, sorry. Ugh. Back to Darwin, back to Oddments, 2014. I'm gonna be honest with you. <laughs> Before Odd Salon, I could not recognize Charles Darwin's mugshot out of a lineup of a bunch of other dead white guys. <laughs> I know. Charles Darwin, author of the 1859 book On the Origin of Species, credited with popularizing the theory of evolution through natural selection. So, Darwin's book expanded on Jean-Baptiste Lamarck's work in the early 19th century, which built on the work of naturalists, work that sprouted from the seeds of ideas planted centuries ago about species changing over time. It inspired years of observation and experimentation and is now one of the best substantiated theories out there, supported by evidence from paleontology, geology, genetics, and developmental biology, the theory of evolution through natural selection. <laughs> Okay, Darwin, let's observe this phrase, substantiated theory. And our night tonight of theory. Scientific theories are not guesses. Scientific theories is an explanation based on facts that have been repeatedly confirmed through observation and experimentation. Yeah? In contrast, we laymen may colloquially refer to a theory a little differently. Like, my theory about where all my Tupperware lids have disappeared to. <laughs> this theory is not a substantiated theory. This is a theory, it's more like an idea based on limited information, heavily biased to suit my needs. Dragons. Now you'll be hearing both kinds of theories tonight, which are still both abstractions meant to explain the world around us. Tonight's speakers will explore stories about substantiated scientific theories about the human body, our planet, and the universe. You will also hear stories about biased ideas based on limited information, leading to completely wackadoo theories about the human body, our planet, and okay, one conspiracy theory because it is so good. <laughs> so please, Join me in welcoming both first-time speakers and seasoned fellows, a birthday girl. Please join me in welcoming Chris Carrico, Catherine Borgeson, Miles Traer, Crystal Riley, Rebecca Power, and Muriel Gordon. So one of my favorite theories helps me understand all of the things I saw that first night at Oddments, that life-changing night at Oddments, and some of those things you'll witness tonight. The theory of the superorganic is a theory that's applied to anthropology, which studies our traditions, our folklore. Social theory attempts to capture aspects of ourselves that seem essentially human, like, like language, art, and literature. The social theory of the superorganic, as introduced in the 19th century by Herbert Spencer, dead white guy, adopted by anthropologist Alfred Kroeber in 1911, dead white guy, and taught to me at one point in college like this, kind of offers an explanation for where elements of folklore like jokes, superstitions, traditions come from, and how they seem to live on. Um, that's the bat signal for you know who. Um, a joke can never die because it is an entity larger than any one person, one organic. A joke is born from a group of organic entities, the super organic. So let's say that I try to tell you a joke and like I, I totally ruin it. 
I tell the punchline in the wrong order. I forget the opening lines. Like, like um, to get to the other side, there was a turkey. I don't know. Ask your father. <laughs> or whatever. Hey, mom. So let's say that's how I heard that joke, OK? And that that's the only way I've heard it. And then I tell it to someone. Michael. I tell it to Michael. And then Michael, he tells it to someone. He tells it to Xavier. And then Xavier, he tells it to somebody else. What will happen is that the joke will self-correct. Because somewhere along the way, the rhythm of the joke will be found. The correctness, the actual humor, will emerge. It cannot be killed by any one bad joke teller. It lives on. It will correct itself. It will be the original joke again. There is so something fundamentally true of our elements of culture, of our folklore, that are created not by any one person, by any one organic, but by a group of people, perhaps a group of people together all in the same place, kind of at a regular time. The theory of the super organic offers an explanation for why that is, why a joke can't be ruined, why it lives on, why a group of people just know when to shout at the same word at the same time, almost without warning. <laughs> why they did back in 2014 at my first night in Otsalon, why you hopefully will tonight. I hope you explore this theory of the super organic tonight. And whether or not you choose to use it as a lens to understand what you're doing, as an abstraction of what you're experiencing, I hope you can appreciate the possibility that as you shout adoringly at these beautiful speakers and cheer for charming black and white portraits of people from hundreds of years ago and pitch your stories for a future Odsalon, odsalon.com slash speak. <laughs> <laughs> I never said it. it was going to be subtle. <laughs> As we celebrate the art of storytelling and unearthing the corners of history and community and San Francisco and drinking on a Tuesday, <laughs> that we are more than just a crowd of individuals of organic. That by participating tonight, perhaps we are realizing the theory of the super organic. And so, to follow Otsalon tradition, we're going to use someone else's words <laughs> as an invocation for this evening's exploration of theory. The following is an excerpt from David Foster Wallace's book, Everything and More, A Compact History of Infinity. I'm going to do my best DFW. Here we go. <laughs> we know. We know our thoughts and feelings are just chemical transfers and 2.8 pounds of electrified pate. We know that we are mostly water and water is mostly hydrogen and hydrogen is flammable and yet we are not flammable. We know a near infinity of truths that contradict our immediate common sense experience of the world. And yet we have to live and function in the world. So we abstract, compartmentalize. There's stuff we know and stuff we know. I know my love for my child is a function of natural selection, but I know I love him, and I feel I act on what I know. So let's raise a glass to the power of thought, how ideas about the world inspire actions that turn into insights, that turn into actions that then, for better or for worse, become our history. And with that, please welcome to the stage for her third talk on the Odslon stage, <laughs> making her eligible for Odslon Fellowship, Miss <laughs> Crystal Riley. <laughs> 